Now, there is a piece out in Truth Out. It is an interview with uh, the, the great Noam Chomsky, and he says, ventilator shortage exposes uh, the cruelty of neoliberal capitalism. So he's tying the global pandemic that we face right now back over to capitalism. So uh, in this interview, we are going to uh, check this out. So the question to him reads, Noam, the outbreak of the new coronavirus disease has spread to most parts of the world, with the United States now having more infected cases than any other country, including China, where the virus originated. Are these surprising developments? And Noam responds saying, The scale of the plague is surprising, indeed shocking, but not its appearance, nor the fact that the U.S. has the worst record in responding to the crisis. Scientists have been warning of a pandemic for years, insistently so since the SARS epidemic of 2003, also caused by coronavirus, for which vaccines were developed but did not proceed beyond the preclinical level. That was the time to begin to put in place rapid response systems in preparation for an outbreak and to set aside spare capacity that would be needed. Initiatives could, have all, could also have been undertaken to develop defenses and modes of treatment for a likely recurrence with a related virus. But scientific sta understanding is not enough. It has to be someone to pick up the ball and run with it. That option was barred by the pathology of the contemporary socioeconomic order. Market signals were clear. There's no profit in preventing a future catastrophe. The government could have stepped in, but that's barred by reigning doctrine. Quote, government is the problem, Reagan told us with a sunny smile, meaning that decision-making has to be handed over even more fully to the business world, which is devoted to private profit and is free from influence by those who might be concerned with the common good. The years that followed injected a dose of neoliberal brutality to the unconstrained capitalist order and the twisted form of markets it constructs. The depth of the pathology is revealed clearly by one of the most dramatic and murderous failures, the lack of ventilators that is one of um, the major bottlenecks in confronting the pandemic. The Department of Health and Human Services foresaw the problem and contracted with a small firm to produce inexpensive, easy-to-use ventilators, but then capitalist logic intervened. The firm was bought by a major corporation, Covidian, which sidelined the project and, quote, in 2014, with no ventilators having been delivered to the government, Covidian executives told officials at the Federal Biomedical Research Agency that they wanted to get out of the contract, according to three formal federal officials. The executives complained that it was not sufficiently profitable for the company. Uh, doubtless true. Neoliberal logic then intervened, dictating that the government could not act to overcome the gross market failure, which is now causing havoc. As the New York Times gently put the matter, the stalled efforts to create a new class of cheap, easy-to-use ventilators highlight the perils of outsourcing projects with critical public health implications to private companies. Their focus on maximizing profits is not always consistent with the government's goal of preparing for a future crisis. Um, and he then goes on to basically talk about how you know, having a uh, profit motive driven healthcare system is not a good idea concerning that it's a life or death thing and that, you know, it's common good, which is definitely a very interesting point to make. And obviously the, uh, the sort of dependence that the Trump administration is now doing, I just heard uh, Mike Pence, for example, saying that what the, what the health insurance companies are doing is quite inspiring because they're canceling co-pays for millions of people so and there was also reports that basically they were trying to get a uh, private in industry to basically find solutions to all the problems like ventilators and you know find a vaccine and find a cure and find these drugs to use to try to uh you know help with the fighting off the coronavirus um and it is true that you know they definitely don't have any vested interest in preventing something like this from happening and the ventilator shortage is not a good one and obviously is going to end up costing lives. But uh, the health, health insurance, and he goes on in this interview to talk about uh, how, you know, we need to remove the profit motive from uh, our health healthcare system, which obviously should because it's a, something that's it's a commodity that's life and death. Um, you don't really have an ability to negotiate for health care. You know, you kind of need to get health care. You know, if you're knocked out in an in ambulance, you're not able to negotiate health care costs. And so that's why you need the government to be your sole negotiator and have the government going through one single plan. They're the ones negotiating the prices instead of five trillion different private companies and them all using loopholes and finding ways to lobby government and then not to, you know, end up paying for someone's surgery or, you know, stuff like that, procedures. 
So he's definitely right. This is definitely a legitimate critique in this sense. And a country like South Korea that has uh, universal health care had a much better response because they made the COVID test widely, widely available and pretty much gave it to anybody who wanted it. Uh, but Noam Chomsky is definitely right in his critique here.